The Tetons have been on the top of my travel list for years, and I was anxious to get there after spending the week in Yellowstone. The day I arrived was rainy and cloudy. I could not see the Tetons at all, even though I snagged an amazing boondocking site. Thankfully, the next morning, the clouds started to clear and I got my first view of these breathtaking mountains. And as the day went on, the view got better and better. I even saw my very first eagle that flew right over my camper. That night, we got the most spectacular sunset I have ever seen. There is a strict five day stay limit at this boondocking site, so I made sure to get up every morning to watch the sunrise over the Tetons. My first exploration in the park was the hike to Taggart Lake. The most direct route is only 0.5 miles to the lake, but if you want to make it longer and a little bit more challenging, you can combine it with the Beaver Creek hike and make it a loop. I have been so jumpy on this trail because there's just signs everywhere about bears. And when I was getting on my truck, the family said they had to turn around because there was a bear on the trail. But I'm coming from the opposite way that they came, so oh my gosh, I just majorly jumped at something though back there that was an inanimate object, so. When I arrived to the lake, a rainstorm started to roll in. Instead of turning back, I took my chances and waited out the storm, hoping it would be a quick summer rain. Thankfully, my risk paid off and the sun came out 10 minutes later to show off the spectacular views. On Saturday morning, I was up and out early for a hike into Cascade Canyon. To avoid hiking around Jenny Lake and to save some time, you can take a boat across the lake. Once across, you are entering the Teton backcountry. There is no water and no bathrooms here, so come prepared. Most people hike to Hidden Falls and then up to Inspiration Point before turning around, but I highly recommend you keep going. It's quite a climb up to Inspiration Point, but once you're up there, Cascade Canyon's elevation gain is so slight you won't notice. Once in Cascade Canyon, you can go all the way to South Fork, which in total from the boat dock is 9.4 miles round trip. You don't have to do the entire hike, but if you have the time and energy, keep going past Inspiration Point to explore the Teton backcountry via the Cascade Canyon Trail. 
On this trail, I saw my very first moose, which just happened to be a mama and baby. If you are an avid hiker or up for an adventure, you can continue on a few different hikes. I chose to press on to Lake Solitude, which is only 2.5 miles from South Fork, but be warned, in that 2.5 miles, you are gaining over 1,300 feet of elevation. I didn't film much of the trail getting to the lake because in all honesty, I was struggling a little bit. Here's how I felt once I arrived to the lake. I'm dead. After soaking in the views, I made my way back, which honestly has the best view on the entire trail. Of course, it's raining, but I don't care. I'm hot, I'm sticky, I'm sweaty. I'm letting it cool me down and wash me off a little. So, yay. <laughs> a few days later, I did one of my most anticipated hikes the Death Canyon Trailhead to Phelps Lake. From the overlook, you make your way down to the lake and in the distance, you'll start to see the reason why I was so excited for this hike, the jumping rock. <laughs> this jumping rock is no joke. It has a 30 foot drop into the lake. I've never been afraid of heights, but even I had to psych myself up for this one. I loved it though, and I cannot recommend the experience enough. If you have the time, you gotta bike the trail that runs from Jenny Lake to Jackson. If you don't have a bike of your own, you can rent it from a shop in Moose near the visitor center. You don't have to bike the whole trail, but biking from Jenny Lake to the park entrance sign and back was stunning. And no visit to the Tetons is complete without watching the sunrise over the mountains with the barns on Mormon Row in the foreground. Later that day, my mom and I were on our way to the Lawrence S. Rockefeller Preserve when we saw some moose at an overlook right off the Moose Wilson Road. This overlook is hard to miss as it's the only spot right off the road where a ton of cars are always parked. The preserve is a small museum dedicated to the park and I highly recommend going and taking in the sound room. I cannot even begin to express how great of a time I had at the Tetons. It lived up to all my expectations and then exceeded them. I could have spent my entire summer here and still wouldn't have wanted to leave at the end of it. Thank you Grand Tetons for giving me your best. I cannot wait to come back. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.